Hey everyone, so it is time for the September garden tour. Uh, so August was actually a little bit slower of a month than the previous months. It was definitely the most productive month in the garden. I mean, I was out here harvesting tomatoes, strawberries, peppers, almost every day, tomatoes definitely every day, uh, cutting a lot of flowers, having a lot more flowers bloom. It was just an incredible month. And even though now, the temperatures are starting to cool a little bit, so we know that fall is coming, uh, but the garden is still beautiful despite what died while we were out of town. Uh, so let me take you around and show you what the garden looks like in September. We will start the tour in our usual place with this center raised bed here. So this is the largest of all four of my raised beds. Now, first thing you'll notice is my very sad looking Supertunia Vista bubblegum. If you saw my last video, budworms attacked it again while we were out of town. So most of the blooms are gone. Now I did apply a bloom boosting fertilizer after I went through and removed all the budworms I could see. There's always more in there though that are very good at hiding. Um, but the flowers have not started to flush back yet. And I feel like, so I've done this a couple times already this year where I've noticed some attacks from budworms, put on the bloom booster fertilizer, blooms have flushed back in a few days. This seems to be taking a little bit longer. So if for some reason these don't come back, I do have a plan of what I'm going to do. I will pull them, replace them with something else in my garden, um, but we will wait and see if I do have to do that or if these come back for one more round. Then up here we have the zinnias. So there are three different zinnias in here. These have grown, I'd say about a foot. So I think they put on, well, I'd say a foot to maybe even a foot and a half, two feet. I think they've doubled in height during the course of August. Uh, if I come in closer, I'll show you the three varieties that I have in the center. So this is some of the Zinderella peach. I really loved just like the whimsical look of the Zinderella. So I think I'm gonna get more and in, in more colors next year, I really like that. I also fell in love with the Queen Lime Orange and basically all of the Queen Lime series, which I feel like everyone loves and this is my first year growing it. So I already have some of the red variety. Um, I'm gonna try to get some orange. I think it's sold out right now on the website. And then last, is Oklahoma pink, which is fine. Uh, I didn't love it. I feel like to me, there's nothing like as special about it as the other ones. And since I have limited space, I probably won't grow it again next year. But in terms of like productivity, it was still fantastic. I just don't love the look of it as much as I love the other zinnias. And yes, I do still feel bad saying that right in front of it. Uh, coming down below here, You'll see kind of a mess I've made. One, my hose, not put away, but that's normal. I have on the outside my two hookahs. So one hookah there, one there. These I'm going to remove um, probably in the next couple weeks and then plant them down in the area between the street and the sidewalk. Um, I just, again, don't really love having perennials in the containers. I like being able to change it up and put annuals here. So I think that's my plan for the hookahs. In here was some sweet potato vine that I actually already moved downstairs. Um, and then I pulled some other plants that were just kind of near the end of their life. But I'm going to replace these with, I don't know if I'm going to do fall flowers or maybe even plant like some lettuce in these containers. So I'm going to try to figure out what I want to do here. But that's kind of on my agenda for the next week or so. Coming over to the cart. Uh, first down here I have another sweet potato vine and then just some mums that I'm going to plant somewhere yet. I just don't know what I'm going to do with them. I basically went to Home Depot. They had the fall plants out and I had to get some. So these are just hanging out here until I figure out what I'm going to do with them. Then I have my morning glory growing up the cart here. And again, many of the leaves seem to be dying, but if we come around and move these out of the way still looks really good from the front and the most exciting part is it is finally blooming now this has not bloomed 
at all um, until I think the last couple days I started to notice the flowers. Funnily enough, the ones I planted were purple. Uh, these, from what people have told me, is the moonflower variety. The blooms are much bigger than the other morning glory that I planted um, in the back deck. So, I mean, they're beautiful, they're huge, and even if they're not what I planted, I'm still glad they are here. So this has done really great on the top here. I'm definitely planning to do this next year uh, with the morning glory because it just turned out exactly how I had imagined. Coming down here, we have some more petunias on either side. Those did okay, not great over here. I think once the morning glories took over, they weren't getting enough sun. Some lissom here, which I'm definitely gonna have next year. And then I decided to throw my fern back there, which was on the ground, but it likes shade and I wanted this to look more full inside, so I just plopped it there. And then coming inside, we have the spider plant. I did pull the super bells from it. Again, they just weren't getting enough light to be happy. Spider plant seems to be doing fine. Um, I'm going to bring this plant inside and have it become a house plant over the winter. So that is what's on the cart and what's in front of the cart is also very exciting. This is my lemon tree. We have one smaller lemon just starting to grow there. Then we have this giant one. So that is my hand and that is the size of the lemon. I've never grown a lemon this large before. Um, it hasn't started to turn yellow yet. It probably, I mean, it definitely won't be ripe, I think, until I move this plant inside. I do overwinter these inside. I will show you how I do that. I don't do it perfectly. I always think the lemon tree is on the verge of dying and then somehow it doesn't die. Um, but this has done really well outside. I do just plant it in like regular potting soil from the garden center, add in some citrus tone, and it's been really happy out here. So that is what we have going on on the flower cart. And the cart itself was from Deer Park Ironworks, one of my favorite additions to the garden this year, just so I could have some more vertical height over here. Now if we swing around, Here we have what is left of my herb rack. I think I pulled four herbs, um, some that completely died while we were out of town when the drip fell out, and some that just weren't looking great. So for me, kind of at this time of the year when we're so close to the end of the growing season, if it's something I really love, I'll try to save it, like my super tunias, but if it's something I'm just kind of like, you know, I like it, but I don't love it, I'm just gonna pull it, um, especially because I had so many herbs. I mean, this rack still looks full. So I have, what do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten left. Um, here I have my pesto basil, which, well, a lot of the herbs are flowering because not only were we gone for almost a week, but I just haven't been the best at keeping up on the herbs this year, um, but the flowers look beautiful. So pesto basil, chocolate mint, lemon balm, which I'm still trying to see, I mean, again, the shape of it came back. It's still a little bit more yellow. I did add some fertilizer, so hopefully that can green up a little bit for the rest of the year. Lavender, parsley, rosemary, other basil that's flowering, oregano, lemon balm, and the tricolor sage. I've really enjoyed this section being my herb rack. I think I will keep it as my herb rack next year. I've mentioned this, I think, but I'm gonna to try to get a different stand that kind of comes out a little bit more on the steps so the plants have more room to grow up, but I absolutely love how this turned out this year. Swinging over now to this corner. First, I'll show you what I pulled. So actually, I have my lemongrass up here that I just cut off um, and I brought that inside to dry. And then down here, this was the pineapple sage. I think this one was the one I was most sad to lose because I absolutely love it, but I did take off the leaves and I'm drying them inside as well. Uh, this was thyme, and then this is my mint plant. So this one was still hooked up to drip, but for some reason it was just getting very scraggly, so I decided to go ahead and pull it. You can see there's still some more blooming off of it. I might leave this in the pot, but what I like to do with the roots of plants is I find when I pull them, they're usually still a little moist. This one is still damp as well, but if I leave them out, 
and it doesn't rain which even though it's cloudy it's not supposed to rain today i think we're not supposed to get rain for like four or five days as this dries out it's easier for me to pull off the soil from the roots and save it to use in containers for next year so that's why i just kind of leave these sitting here until i can get them thoroughly dry and then save the soil and then either compost the roots or if my composter is full then i will put them all in a bag Again, if you're in Chicago, 311 for garden waste, and they will take it and compost it for you. Behind, I have my strawberry plant, which has done great this year. There's actually strawberries here I need to harvest. I had some issues last year um, with like powdery mildew, and I don't really know what I did differently this year, but they've been really happy. There's actually two strawberry plants inside of this galvanized pot. In the back we have one, two, and then there's a third hydrangea back there. I am going to overwinter these and then put them on the back deck, which gets the morning sun. That's a little less harsh and see if they do better because they just did not like it up here. And if it's going to continue to get hotter in Chicago, I think they're going to need a little bit more gentle of an environment. Um, I have here the elephant ear. This one well, one, it didn't get as large as I thought. I think the pot size I was recommended was too small. And again, I don't think it really fits in with my garden. So I'm going to save the bulb. Well, I'm going to remove the plant, um, dig up the bulb in the pot, and then give it to somebody local who wants it. Over here, I have my raspberry bush and raspberries that are just starting to ripen so this is really exciting raspberries are my favorite fruit so finally having some available for me makes me really happy coming down here i have my two blueberries so this is a standard size this is a dwarf variety now each of these so i think this one is just over a year old this one i planted this year so it's not a year old yet and it was really small when I planted it, but they haven't produced blueberries yet. Usually that can take a few years. Um, so hopefully next year or two, there will be some blueberries. But I mean, this one looks really pretty, especially the more compact variety. So yeah, my two blueberry plants here. Then in this bed, what's probably my favorite flower, the gomfrina. So four varieties in here and a rogue petunia that I planted last year that reseeded itself, which I think just looks really beautiful in there as well. But I have QAS Purple. Now this one I've mentioned before looks a little bit different than the photos, um, but QAS Purple are the seeds I got. This is Strawberry Fields, and then QIS Orange, and the fourth one I have in here is QIS Carmine. I only grew Carmine last year in this bed, or overall, but I had just that Carmine here, and I really love having the mixture of colors because, again, my ideal garden style is as many colors in your garden as possible. Coming over here, I have the knockout rose that I just got this spring. This has bloomed four times already, I think. It's just continued to um, put out new rounds of bloom, so it's been really beautiful. Um, I love the color of the blooms, this kind of like hot pink color. And I've also been saving the petals as they dry just to use. I mean, so they don't have a very strong scent. I did try to make some rose water and it smells like nothing. Um, but use even as like confetti or decorations just kind of around the house. If I have people over sprinkling some rose petals around, I think that just looks really pretty. Now, if we come this way, I think this is currently my favorite view because it's so colorful and you can see the sunflower blooms on top of the sunflower peat trellises. So we'll now make our way down this aisle. I have one rhubarb plant here and another one back there. These I planted last year, overwintered them outside. I didn't cover them or anything and they came back just fine. Over here I have these zinnias, which are called the giant dahlia zinnias. Um, so yes, zinnias, but the word dahlia is in them. And I think we have a sleeping bee. I 
I don't want to bother him too much. I always get concerned that they are dead and just not sleeping. Oh, I also see some. Oh, what are these? I'm blanking on the name. Are those the cucumber beetles? Either way, I know that I do not like them and they eat my plants. So I will do something about those in just a second. I also see one on the zinnia over there. Um, but these are, again, the giant dahlia zinnias. They're not completely on the ground, so they're in a grow bag, a 30 gallon grow bag. They're probably a foot off the ground, but they get, I mean, that one's taller than me. So they grow probably between like four to five feet. And it was just a rainbow mix of color. Most of them happen to be yellow that are blooming right now. In front of it, we have my bell pepper plant, which has done really well this year. Then coming over here, in this mess, I have my two cherry tomatoes. So a yellow one over here, red one over here. They're all mixed together. Even though they did fine this close together, um, I am starting to realize that if I have a yellow and a red variety, it's kind of hard to tell which ones are the ripe yellow ones and which ones are the still ripening red ones that just happen to be yellow right now. Uh, so I think next year I'll probably plant these in separate bags and then still plant something else with them. But these are also in one 30 gallon grow bag. And then my third 30 gallon grow bag is here with these zinnias, which are the giant Baneri. And again, this one was just a mix of colors. So I can't really tell a difference just looking at it between the giant Baneri and the giant Dahlia, but they both look beautiful to me. And with these, I love them so much, I always come out harvest them and then there are new blooms ready to go a few days later. Swinging over here, let me back up a bit. We have a pot here that has both Oklahoma pink and one queen, one Oklahoma pink, one queen, queen lime orange, but you can see the Oklahoma pink has taken over. I have not deadheaded anything since we've been back, so I need to do that. These look a little bit too far gone. Um, these look like I can cut them and put them in a vase. So I will probably do that either today or tomorrow. In the back here, I have more super tunias that did not, at least so far, uh, get attacked by the budworms. These are super tunia vista jazzberry. And then I have six straw flower plants here, which I've gotten pretty tall. Um, these are the tallest things in my garden and they're really strong because even though we have some pretty hard winds up here, these have stayed upright at least so far, fingers crossed. Um, next year, I'm not gonna plant straw flowers in here. I wanna get them lower to the ground. And also I want more stuff more compact in this bed. Then we have maybe the most beautiful thing in the garden. Uh, this is the Autos Thridalia and these have just done substantially better than any other dahlias in the garden. Again, the other ones are doing great too, but these just have constant blooms all of the time, all of the year. Like I think since the end of June, I've just had, it looked like this all of the time. So that's done really wonderfully. I have next to it, the Thomas A. Edison, which you can see the blooms back there are the deep purple. This one just hasn't bloomed as often and it also started blooming later in the season. So I'm saving all of the tubers to grow next year, but not my favorite. Then over here we have the Gomfrina in the 12 inch containers, QAS purple, QAS pink, which is a very, very, very pale pink. And I love how many I shoved in here. So these are about three inches apart. I think recommended was six. This is how I'm growing my Gomfrina next year. In the raised bed, I'm putting them close together. I'm putting them in pots close together because this is just magical. In the bed behind it, also magical, I have the sunflowers that I was going to pull and then instead tied them together and turned them into a pea trellis. Then I noticed there were blooms on them and like I just, I could not have planned this better. In fact, I didn't plan for them to bloom like this, but I'm going to pretend that I did. Like this is just, I don't know. I don't know if everyone else is as amazed by it as I am, but I just love that it's a living trellis that is also blooming. Then I have the two decorative dahlias. These have also, I'd say, bloomed pretty consistently. They just don't put out as many blooms at one time as Otto's Thrill. But I love, 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 love the mix of colors. So kind of pink to orange to yellow. And if it's sunny, which it's not right now, 
they also kind of glitter in the sunlight. So I've loved those. And you can see the peas starting to grow down there. But this corner right now has just been kind of the star of the show for me over the last few weeks. Coming through here now, we have the other fire pot. Dahlia, again, beautiful. Going to save those tubers for next year. And then we'll come over to probably the saddest looking corner in the garden. Uh, these are the dahlias that got really impacted by the wind while we were gone. Uh, so I have Cafe Olay over there. At least I think this is one that I got last year that was supposed to be Penhill Watermelon and looked like Cafe Olay. So that's what I'm going with. Uh, we have Michaela Miranda here, which is growing that way. More Otto's Thrill, which is the only one that stayed upright. And then the Thomas A. Edison again. So I'll come in closer. showing this off one more time uh, but you can see here's the Thomas A. Edison all the beautiful blooms on the Otto's Thrill there's a good amount of blooms actually on the Michaela Miranda they're just oh another random bug that is in there um, but they're blooming really well they're just growing that direction right now so I'm gonna leave those there and then there is one bloom up here hello <laughs> yeah that looks kind of sad but you know what it's still alive and that's all i can ask for now the thomas a edison right here was the one that's losing leaves on the bottom so i decided to pot up the salvia that i got um from the grand garden show so this is the one i won from signing up early and just shoved it in front of it so that is a garden tip that if something looks bad in your garden just put a plant in front of it and no one will know down here, I just potted these up. These are the, the tiny quick fire hydrangea. I think these are supposed to grow to like three to five feet. Right now I've potted them in eight inch terracotta pots, which are in no way going to work as they grow. I think what was recommended was like a 16 inch diameter pot, but that would look very ridiculous <laughs> with the size of these right now. I don't expect them to put on much growth this year. Um, I will overwinter them. And then hopefully they come back next year, but I think it'll be really nice to have some smaller hydrangeas that hopefully do better in the morning light next year. Um, I also have just a random sweet potato vine that I pulled out of the pot and potted in here. I want to try to bring this inside because I think it would be really pretty as like fall decor on our mantle. I like to decorate with as many plants as possible for the seasons. And then behind... We have, well, we have an aster in the back, right there. Um, I did pull the pink one. And then we have the aronia berry bush in front. I will not be planting anything with the aronia berry next year. Um, the aronia berry I planted last year and it overwintered and came back. And then I put the asters in there because I had no other space for them. Um, so next year I'm going to plan better. Hopefully be getting some more raised beds. But yeah, this is the... Again, kind of sad looking corner, but you know what? It still makes me happy. So we'll take one final swing around the garden here. So that is how the garden looks in September. If you want to take a look back at the previous garden tours, I will link those below. I also have garden tours from last year if you want to see how September of 2021 compared to 2022. Uh, this month, I think most of my flowers will still be here throughout the month. It's usually still like about as warm as it is in June in September here. So hopefully it's still an incredible month in the garden. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.